compared to getting in front of the camera, and this is this is a show that's done almost entirely in pre-production because we have to have everything everything set with regards to the songs that we're going to do, the choreography, rights and clearances, um, and you know all the concepts done by the time we get in front of the camera. So you know Ryan and and, and his and his creative team are developing the story ideas. You know probably four or five weeks out, we deal with rights and clearances. We start to demo up the music. Uh, then we go to final recording, then we do choreography, rehearsals, and uh, all of that happens before we get in front of the camera. It's probably about, you know, no longer than four or five weeks now, which is, which is a, a highly, highly condensed schedule, and we're, you know, juggling about, you know, four episodes at any particular moment. If you can tell us a story naming names or not naming names, of course it'd be more interesting if you can name names, of a song that you really wanted that just didn't work out. And if you can't name names, why things sometimes just don't work out? What are some of the hiccups in the process of getting this to screen? Um, you know, not a lot. Not, not a lot of that's happened in the second season. I mean, we're so wildly popular now, and, it, and there's uh, it's, it's, it's driving the music industry in a lot of different ways. People really want to be involved. The first season was, was different because the show was not popular. Uh, so we were, we were, I spent a lot more time trying to convince people that this is something that they were going to be part of. The model for the show is certainly to use, you know, the most popular music, um, whether it's stuff that's charting right now, like the Katy Perry's or the Rihanna's of the world, or, or you know, hugely, hugely popular artists in the last 20, 30, or 40 years. Um, so it took a lot more convincing. Um, some of the, uh, you know, one of the bands, for instance, uh, ELO, we wanted to do something with Mr. Blue Sky early on, and uh, Jeff Lynne and his management team decided that they just didn't want to be involved uh, because they thought it was a, a, a reality game show. They, you know, they thought it was more like an American Idol type of thing or, or whatnot, and probably a cheap version of American Idol. So, uh, without even really understanding what it was, they just kind of said no uh, right off the bat. Um, there's a, there's a, I guess, a fairly famous story about Coldplay. Um, where we wanted to do Viva La Vida in the pilot episode, and uh, they had turned it down. And, and I can't say that I'm necessarily surprised, again, because, you know, during, during the first, you know, at, at the sh everybody knows who, what the show is now, people want to be involved, it, it has significance, but, again, when we were making that first episode, you know, there was, there was, there was nothing, it was, just, it was just a concept, it was just an idea, it was something that, uh, you know, we were just experimenting with, so, you know, Coldplay at that point had, had denied it, and then, uh, you know, much later down the road, after the show became popular, uh, it was somebody on their management team called me and, and said, you know, Chris just wants to let you know that it's all good. If, you, if we ever want to go back and use, use the play, we can go ahead and do that. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure, that, uh, I'm sure that we'll probably do that at some point, especially since Gwyneth has been, has been on the show. And all is forgiven. Uh, it's coming back. All, all is forgiven. Um, you know, there's been, a, there's been a couple of instances now where... You know, and I'll, I'll, I think this is—I think this is speaks volumes about about the show's popularity. But a couple instances where where uh, bands, even though we haven't necessarily you know asked them and, and they you know denied it, you know bands like uh, Kings of Leon or or uh, uh, you know Damon Albarn from from uh, Blur and and the Gorillas have you know gone on record to say I would I would never do Glee or you know I, I, you know they, they shouldn't even ask me or you know. Or they asked me, but I didn't want, I didn't want to do it. So it seems like it's a, the chic thing to say that say that I turned Glee down. Uh, again, I think that's just a you know testament to its popularity. And you know, if people care so much that they want to talk shit about my show, I, I think that's a positive thing, frankly. Talk a little bit about weighing the 